Best performance by a kicker in the history of the Nebraska high school state playoffs. No field goal kicker has ever had five field goals in a game. This one from 45 yards out. Tristan Alvano to win it. Alvano got it. it. Wow! What a finish! Alvano wins it for Westside! Yeah. I can smell all of the smoke All that love and positivity, that shit is a joke I should dead them all, my heart ski down slopes When you the piggy bank, everybody wanna see you broke, bro Me and snakes don't lip lock I don't think the feet look good on me like flip flops I know if I spit it, it belongs in the ziplock They know I'ma kill them all they hear in this TikTok Your time is up Before we get started uh, with the episode today, I just want to talk to you real quick about my friend Patrick Spicer over at Hybrid Human Performances. Hybrid Human Performances is a state-of-the-art training facility located in Lincoln, Nebraska, with reputable coaches that can take you to the next level. Each training session is designed to and for the athlete to be successful in their sport. Notable Hybrid Human Performance alumni include cornerback for the Chicago Bears, Lamar Jackson, Seahawks safety, Deontay Williams, Nebraska Cornhuskers quarterback, Casey Thompson, and Lincoln native, Noah Walters, quarterback for the North Alabama Lions. If you want to take your game to the next level, contact Patrick with Hybrid Human Performance at 307-321-8365 or shoot him an email at patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, at hybrid-hp.com. Enjoy the episode. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Oscar Galindo. I am uh, the host of the official visit. Uh, and today I got a very special guest. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys have probably heard of him on social media now or seen him, you know, kicking a game winner by now uh, is West Side kicker Tristan Alvano. Tristan, how are you doing, man? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, you know, I think we'll kind of just jump right into it. Um, you know, we're, we're about 48 hours uh, removed from, you know, the, the championship game, um, kind of how, how, is, how, is, how have those hours been? How, how, you know, what's been going on? I'm sure, you know, social media messages are all blowing up. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I mean, it's been a crazy 48 hours. Like you said, I mean, it's, uh, I haven't gotten a lot of sleep. That's for sure. I mean, <laughs> it's been, uh, I'd say kind of chaotic, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, it was just an incredible night on Monday night like I mean as a kicker like you dream of those game winning opportunities and your team run after you after one of those field goals you make and then I mean just to have it in the state championship game against a against a great opponent in that kind of setting I mean I mean last year was the 73 seven to three game and now what was it 43 41 I mean that's just incredible and the to walk it off like that as a kicker is <laughs> that's as special as you can get yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, like you said, it's got to be, you know, every kicker's dream, not just to win a game winner, but a game winner in the state championship. Yeah. Uh, You know, what what were those emotions like afterwards? Like I saw, you know, we all saw you hitting the old uh, Michigan State, uh, you know, the wind-up as you <laughs> ran off. Uh, you know, what, what was it like emotionally after that? And I'm sure, like, has it even really still, like, has it hit you yet? Has it, are you still waiting for like sit back and be like, Oh, wow. Um, I mean, obviously on the field, like, uh, the final, I mean, I'm out there pretty much. I'm on the 35, uh, I'm on Gretna's 35, uh, kicking. And then, uh, you know, the snap and hold are good kicks up and then I see it go in and then pretty much in a blink of an eye, I'm just, uh, down in the other end zone, just in a dog pile. Like it's just, <laughs> It, it's still kind of like a blur wow. like I mean it, it, yeah I don't know it's it's like it felt like a dream and then uh you know when all the guys were running at me I was like I, I didn't know what to do and that was by far the worst pain of my life in the bottom of that dog pile yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> yeah. uh, so then you know like you said you know like we've kind of touched on you know that's always 
that's always, you know, something that you always think about, like, oh, you know, scoring the game when he touched down, the game when he field goal. Um, how many times had you, uh, you know, leading up to that game, you know, you've kicked several, you know, big field goals, you know, long field goals, all that. But how many times had, had you taken the chance before uh, the game, how should I say this, before the game or before that moment came up, how many times had you taken that mental rep already? Because I've um, I mean, I always, I'm really big in the mental aspect of, uh, my game. I mean, coach Moravec, my sports psychologist and well, the team sports psychologist and, uh, my kicking coach at West side, you know, he really works with, he works with the whole team, but he obviously really, uh, works with the kickers and stuff. Cause I mean, he's around us all practice long. And, uh, I mean, he's helped me so much grow my mental game over the four years I've been here. And I mean, just, just knowing that, you know, I mean, on every game, on every game day, I'm always visualizing and meditating and, you know, just taking those mental reps because I want to know, I want to be prepared for those type of pressure situations early. And it, it really helps because in some ways it felt like I'd already made the kick before I even went out there because I've taken those uh, reps before mentally. And so I've done the work that I needed to before. And then the rest was just execution by the the whole field goal unit yeah yeah definitely. And, I'm, and i'm glad you you know t- you touched on uh you know coach uh sorry if I, marvick yeah marvick yeah Marvik. okay there we go i don't want to mispronounce it but yeah i'm glad you touched on that because you know i i, I got a chance to meet him in the summer at a, like a battle it was like the battle seven on seven i got to talk to him a little bit and you know that's that's all stuff that is i'm very like interested in so I guess my question to you would be, you know, what, what kind of takeaways or, you know, obviously not like trying to give away any, any of your guys' secrets, but like what kind of takeaways, what kind of like things do you guys do to, you know, get you, you know, not just yourself, but, you know, Marty and all, all the special teams guys, you know, in that mental space that, you know, we're going to conquer this third, third phase of the game so that we are, you know, a complete team. Um, well, I mean, the whole team, I mean, we have a, I mean, we have a certain day where, I mean, we just have like a, we call coach Moravec the wizard. And so we have a wizard, we had called, we have a wizard Wednesday. And so he's always just giving us a, every Wednesday, he gives us a mental talk and just has a little presentation for us pre-practice. And um, I mean, that really helps us. And I think that's part of our edge. And that's something that we use to our advantage that some other teams may not get. And I don't say that in like a cocky way. I just mean like we use that, we use our resources and we, we take the advantage and then uh, kicking wise. I mean, he just really, he really makes sure like we uh, emphasis the positive self-talk. I mean, just knowing that because if you, if you go into something like a pressure situation and, you know, or question yourself or down yourself, I mean, you've already failed before you even try. And so just knowing that you are positive and just confident in yourself and your abilities and just trust yourself. I mean, that that's huge. And that's where, I mean, I was on the, I think there was a clip on uh, TV I saw and I was just, I was leaning against the railing uh, just like before while Anthony and the offense were driving down that last minute 40. And I was like in between kicks into my net. Like I was just leaning on the railing, just watching. And I was just talking to myself. That's all I was doing over there. And that's, I, that, I think that's what helped me out the most. Yeah. So then, you know, like, like we said, you're not, you're not, a, a, you know, new to these big time kicks, like even dating back to last year, you had, uh, you know, one of the more memorable ones I have is the, it was like a like 40 some, maybe 50 yarder against Bell West in a storm. Um, you know, so, you know, it's not just even under, you know, not per non ideal conditions, like, what is it that you have? Cause you know, it, it takes a special kind of, like you mentioned, a confidence. Like what, what is it that, uh, you know, goes through your head when you're going up to those kicks and like, um, yeah, just basically like what, what's going on in that moment when you're lined up and you're, you know, teeing it up. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, me being a, a kid from Omaha, I mean, obviously, you know, there's a lot of weather conditions throughout the year and just, um, whether that's kicking in the winter, like in the off season, or as the temperatures have started to drop this past season, like getting them, you know, as we get into October and November, the 
it gets windier and colder and kick, no one likes kicking a cold ball but on top of that throw kicking into a 15 mile an hour wind like that sucks but I think that's kind of my um I mean I kind of use that as my edge compared to I mean not that other kids in the state don't do that I'm just saying like um I feel like if I compare myself to kids like around the country I've been I've been told like it's it can work to my advantage, you know, knowing yeah. how to kick in those elements yeah, and being kind of battle tested. I mean, if I'm, if there's a 15 mile an hour wind, I'm, I'm always going out there saying I want to kick into it and not with it because that's only going to make you better. And I think that, and so then like you get, you get me in a situation like Memorial where like, yeah, I'm on college uprights, um, but there's no wind. So mm-hmm. I think that I can use that to my advantage. Cause I mean, if I practice in a lot of wind or, not good conditions then um i'm i'm made for that yeah definitely. so then you know kind of track tracking back a little bit uh you know talking about you know what things you're do to like find your edge you know stuff like that um going back to last year and you know in that state championship you know obviously you know you guys lost uh to gretna last year um Mm -hmm. how much did you use that as like a motivating factor um you know, going into this season and, you know, in your training and preparation and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that really left, and I'm speaking for the whole team on this, that left a bad taste in our mouth. And obviously it was fuel to the fire. I mean, we were, we were really upset about that and we didn't, we didn't like the outcome, obviously. I mean, Gretna beat us and uh, they played a, they played a hell of a game. It was a defensive battle on both sides of the ball. Um, me individually, I mean, the, I had a kick in the second half, I think that was, uh, it got tipped and blocked and that, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, now all the, all the, um, blame may not be on me for that, but I think personally, I kind of took that to heart and that just made me kind of work harder. And I kind of use that to my edge and this off season, I just tried to, um, make sure that didn't happen again and um yeah I just that was kind of where I wanted to work hard for it yeah definitely so I'm kind of as you guys are progressing through the season you guys uh you know you guys were rolling you guys had some you know picked up a lot of big wins you know you guys had that big win against Belt West and you know a lot of other great teams and you guys kind of hit a little bit of a road bump there against North Platte um mm-hmm. and then, you know obviously from there you guys wouldn't go on to lose a game what you know it's it's a long it's a long drive back from North Platte. What was um, you know, what was going through everybody's mind, or you know, especially yourself after that to say, all right, this is not going to define our season, and all, you know, our t- all the goals that we have for ourselves are still you know attainable. What what what, did, what were you guys doing uh, to you know make sure you keep yourselves in that you know mindset to keep going, to keep fighting? Yeah, I mean. I don't, I don't think we – I don't know if we necessarily went in that game overconfident, but I will say that I definitely think a loss out there humbled us mm-hmm. and made us realize, like, okay, well, well, this is what went wrong. Maybe it was some lack of effort or, you know, guys – some guys not finishing because uh, that's, that's part of our culture. I mean, you look at our um, – I mean, all year we've talked about ET, you know, effort toughness or um, just – finish in maximum effort i mean so you you look back at our culture and you know you, you just say like all right well you know we may have had some problems with that part of our game uh and you know we we got to fix that in these coming weeks and so we we used that as motivation kept working and it seemed like from there our uh preparation and practice every week just kept getting better and better and we just got more confident in each other and trust each other and i think that's what helped us be successful in the long run yeah definitely because you yeah like i said you guys were on a roll uh you know starting off the season i can't remember how many you guys started off like six and six and or something like that yeah Um, so so yeah so maybe maybe something like that kind of you know helps you guys put everything back into perspective like all right yeah maybe we're not indestructible um so then you know kind of talking a little bit about the championship game again circling back to that i mean to start the game you know both teams were just firing, uh, you know, touchdown here, touchdown there, touchdown back to, you know, to you guys. 
was there a point in the game where you're like, man, I might, you know, not be, I might, you know, just have to come in for extra points. Did you, did it ever cross your mind? Like I'm going to have to be kicking, you know, five field goals and then I'm going to be lining up for that uh, final one. Well, no, I mean, again, you look at our first quarter, we scored 28 points and I was like thinking to myself, okay, well, I don't know if I'm going to have a lot of field goal opportunities this game. So just make the most of my extra points and kickoffs. And, um, but then, you know, I get one in the, get one in the second quarter and I get four in the second half and that would turn out to be the rest of our points. I mean, our offense did a great job of staying consistent and getting me in range and our defense uh, stepped up when I needed to and held Gretna to some, some to held him this punt and get us the ball back. And I mean, we just kept kind of slowly adding points. I mean, and it's just, uh, I had, no, I did not think we were going to, I was going to get five opportunities in the state championship game and have a game winner, but it was, I don't know. That was, it's crazy just to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, as, like I said, I was watching the game and I was like, man, these guys are just, it's going to be, you know, 60 to 61 at the end of it. I didn't really think, you know, it would end on five field goals from you guys to win it. Um, so then, you know, kind of after the game, you know, some of the biggest talk I saw on, on Twitter was can't let, can't let them leave Memorial. You can't let them leave Memorial, uh, just because, you know, the Huskers, uh, you know, Husker faithful is hoping to keep you in, in, uh, Nebraska. Do you, and then the next morning you ended up receiving that offer. You want to talk a little bit about what that was like or how that kind of transpired? Yeah. So, um. I was, uh, well, to back up a little bit, I got a preferred walk-on offer from Nebraska, I think about three weeks ago, uh, the week they played Minnesota. Um, uh, and then, you know, obviously after a state championship game, we were in the locker room after, um, and uh, Coach Benning was showing me uh, and telling me what Coach jo- Coach Mickey Joseph uh, texted him, and he uh, told him that I'm offered. And so that was, that was kind of, that kind of got my uh, mind right. And I just kind of, I wasn't, I mean, obviously I was, I was thrilled, but then when coach Mick, coach Joseph called me the next morning around 7 a.m. Uh, the day after the state championship game, then I was, I was a lot more calm because I'd kind of, I guess, seen it coming and I knew it could potentially be coming if he called me. And uh, that's what he said. I mean, he said that he wanted to kick me or watch me kick in person and uh, he got the opportunity and I had a great performance on Monday night on that. Um, he doesn't want me leaving the, doesn't want me leaving the state of Nebraska and wants me to come kick for him and that I'm on a full, full ride scholarship. So that, and that's, as a kicker, that's a big deal coming out of high school because most of the time it's those prefer walk on offers. And I mean, just knowing that Nebraska sees, sees that type of value and interest in me means a lot. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. So, yeah. So like you mentioned, you know, most offers and stuff like that come for kickers that are preferred walk on ones. Um, so yeah, so that's huge, huge to, you know, get that full ride. Um, have there been any other schools that kind of, you know, any additional schools that have crept in the DMS and said, Hey, like we saw what you did there, uh, yeah. since then. Uh, I think, uh, I texted a little bit with, uh, like, were you talking like brand new schools? Uh, you know, brand new schools or maybe schools that you were talking to and they like reached out again and said, yo, that was, <laughs> that was different. Yeah, no, I've been, I mean, I've been talking to recently a lot of schools like, uh, like I've been talking to Iowa, Iowa State, Oklahoma, Arkansas quite a bit. And um, I'm just kind of waiting on them to see what they're going to do with their kicking situation. But, and then like in regards to new schools, I mean, uh, I think Michigan State, Oklahoma State and uh, Northwestern kind of texted me a little bit. So that's, that's obviously really cool. And I'm excited to see, you know, what happens these next few weeks. Hopefully I get a couple more great opportunities, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Michigan state maybe had a little bit of flashbacks with that celebration there a little bit. Huh? <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I got to bring that up to him. <laughs> um, so yeah. So then, you know, we talked about recruiting a little bit. Do you have, have you like, um, we know you've been on a couple of visits, uh, like Minnesota, uh, all those kinds of schools, Iowa too. Um, are there? Do you have any other any more visits coming up or planned up? 
Um, I think I'm going to go on an official to uh, North Dakota State next weekend. Okay. I'm trying to sort that out. I actually, I think I'm going to, and I think I'm going to Iowa for their game against Nebraska here in a couple of days. The, the heroes game so that'll be really cool to see i haven't seen that in person before so that'll be nice and then in regards to uh, kind of after that i'm obviously going to try to um get to some places you know see see what type of schools kind of want me to come down and check everything out um so yeah we'll see i mean i'm excited for that and then uh i might have uh arkansas coming up here to watch me kick when they're allowed to uh when after their regular season's over and the, the dead period's over yeah, I think that that'll be really cool. So I'm excited for that. Nice. Sounds like you know a lot of a lot of interest there coming your way. So after a game like that, you know it's not not surprising. Um. So and kind of jumping back to West Side Ball a little bit. Um. Well, you know, you you leave there. You and the senior class leave there. You guys got two two championships out of four attempts, correct? Mm-hmm. Four attempts. So that's hey man, that's two that's two chips, two rings. Um. What what you know, reflecting back on your time playing for the Warriors, well, you know, what would you say are like some of the biggest takeaways from you know playing for playing for Westside? Um, I mean, I started as a, I started as a soccer player, and just I was just I was just trying out football. You know, I I started playing football my freshman year, started kicking, uh, got injured like halfway through because I was playing club soccer and that's, that's how I got injured. And then I came back halfway through my sophomore year uh, and uh, had a big kickoff role on varsity kicking off for him. And I said, that was really cool. Uh, Wednesday. And then I made a huge jump in between my uh, sophomore and junior year. Mm-hmm. And I was had a good junior year and this year was another solid season on my part. And I'm just, uh, I mean, I just, at this point last year, I still wanted to play college soccer. Yeah. And so this whole football thing is new to me. And I, I mean, obviously I, as a kid, I won, I dreamed about playing college soccer and just thought college football was really cool, but I'll, you know, I'll never do it. Mm-hmm. And cause I, I mean, I didn't play as a little kid, so yeah. obviously I'm not going to think I'd play, but uh, this whole thing's new to me still. And I mean, I'm learning something new every day about the recruiting process when it comes to football, cause it's completely different with soccer. Um, and it's just really cool and kind of humbling just to see all this type of stuff happen. And I just, I don't know, it's, it never gets old. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's surreal. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, huge at a, looking back, you had an outstanding career, you know, and you know, hopefully I'll be trying to continue into the collegiate and, you know, professional ranks. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, jump. You know, you mentioned their soccer a little bit. Uh, has there been any, you know, looks at, you know, offers or anything like that? I know, like, like you mentioned, so college soccer is a little bit different. It's a different beast when it comes to recruiting. But has there been any interest on that end as well? Yeah, I mean, I'd say, obviously, I played uh, soccer last year for West Side, and we we lost in the state championship. Um, but I mean. At that point, I was still kind of – at that point, I was I was set on playing college football at that mm-hmm. point. So kind of after I went to some of those Coles kicking camps uh, in last December and January, and I got uh, my ranking and some attention, I kind of realized, like, okay – I think I, I kind of stopped pursuing trying to get recruited for soccer at that point. So, no, I never got any offers or anything. But I would I – would, I'm still interested to see, like, if I would have – like works solely on soccer and like try to get recruited for that. I, I'm interested to see where I could have ended up, but obviously I'm happy with where I, where I am playing football and I'm enjoying every moment of it. Yeah. Definitely. So then, you know, now the season's over, you, you, you avenged one, one state championship loss and, you know, going into soccer season yet, you guys have a chance to, you know, avenge another one. Is that, is that what you guys are, um, you know, I know, like I said, I know you guys are you're fresh off of football season. You probably haven't even started thinking about that. But is that also like in the back of your mind, like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get this one back too? Well, I think uh, with me being soccer and football, you know, we both teams lost to Grenada last year in the in the state championship, uh, and uh, I I think the soccer guys really appreciated me and Marty 
mm-hmm. with us being their teammates. I think they really appreciated us kind of win this. And it felt, it didn't feel like just a, a football team winning. It felt like a community winning, you know. Yeah. I think, you know, Grenda's had some great teams in a lot of their sports recently. And they had a number in a few sports last year. Mm-hmm. It's safe to say that. And I think us winning on Monday really just, it was really good for our community because i mean they they support us so much i mean we have so many fans and we have so many fans around the country honestly just people that are from here alums that move i mean it's it's a, it's unbelievable and just knowing that we got this done for them and, and possibly played in the one of the greatest state championship games ever arguably maybe the best i don't know I don't know that I haven't been around long enough to <laughs> see all of them, but uh, just knowing that we were a part of that and came out as winners, you know, I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. It's incredible. Yeah. That's awesome. That's huge. So then, you know, kind of starting to wrap up here a little bit. Um, one of the things I do on here is I, you know, I give you guys, you know, the players a chance to, you know, give thanks to the people that have helped them along the way. Uh, just because, like I always say, you know, we don't always necessarily get the time to do so in our everyday lives, especially mm-hmm. you know, some of the people we're closest to. So um, this is my opportunity, or this is me giving you an opportunity to, you know, thank those people that have helped you, coaches, parents, all that kind of stuff, um, get get this far. Uh, well, I think first got to be uh, first got to be my parents. Easily, I mean, they they're so supportive they've made me who I am. I mean, they're, they, they sacrifice so much for me. They do so much for me. Like all those, whether it's soccer or football recruiting trips, whatever it is, you know, all the, all the long car rides, the money on gas and hotels and food and all the travel expenses, or just making sure I'm taken care of at home, you know, with just, I don't know, my mom's home cooked meals. Like <laughs> it's just, they they deserve a lot of credit and a lot of praise and then i mean moving over to kind of uh west side i mean obviously you know uh i i don't want to name off and list off every single football coach because the, i'll i feel like i'll forget someone on accident so i just got to say the whole staff in general yeah. because they i mean <laughs> they they're so i I don't know. That staff is so tight knit and just they get each other and they're a heck of a coaching staff and they have a huge impact on their players. And I don't even think they always realize that. Like, I don't know. I can't even put into words the type of appreciation I have for them, but I don't know. They took me and I was a soccer player coming in over a four year period. They just made me fall in love with football and just, I mean, the life of a kicker is a little different than, you know, typical position, but they just made me, I don't know, just fall in love with it and just really enjoy it. And yeah. I just, I love it. And then obviously a special thanks to Coach Moravec because, I mean, he taught me how to kick. And I was literally day one with him kicking into a soccer net and then just and just learning how to how to kick. That's literally how we started. Mm-hmm. And then now, now we're here and I'm kicking in the state championship game with him for second straight year. Thir- sorry, no, third straight year kicking with them in the state championship game like that's that's insane and then uh obviously the teammates like they we have such a good culture and such a good brotherhood at west side like i can do uh we can do what we do without each other and uh just i mean there's not a better experience to end on as a senior kicker than getting going out there and telling your whole and the the whole, whole offense coming out um, the whole offense coming out and knowing that I got this and they, they say, and they trust me and they love me and, uh, everything like, and then me going out there and obviously making the game wing kick and then them all running towards me and, and then in a dog pile, like that's, that's incredible. That, that experience I'll never forget with my teammates. And I just, I love them for it. Yeah. That's special, man. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's one of those moments you just, you know, you'll never forget, you know, the people watching, they'll, they'll probably won't forget the time, you know, uh, Westside kicker Tristan Alvano scored the game winner. So, 
um you know you guys you guys are a young team is there anything you have to say to to the young guns you know coming back next year and the years after that um honestly i mean i was a i was a sophomore a little story time for you i was a sophomore <laughs> and we have uh we have our senior towards the end of the year we have those senior talks so every senior goes up and kind of talks about like what the program means to them and uh you know what their plans are after high school and everything uh and i was a sophomore looking at the se- those current seniors with the year we won state and i was just like man like that's so far down the road me doing that like that'll never be me and then in the blink of an eye uh i'm there giving that talk yeah and it's i not saying i i didn't i didn't take any of it for granted but it's just kind of humbling how fast that Mm -hmm. whole journey went by and how like one day I was looking up to some of the greatest players to come out of West side my sophomore year. And then I'm doing that talk and talking to those freshmen or sophomores or juniors, my senior year, and just knowing how fast it went by. It just, it really goes to show like not saying I did, but don't take anything for granted because you only get so many games and so many practices in a West side uniform or any uniform of, you know, this, I mean, any, any team, but especially West side, uh, but just don't waste any minute of it. Embrace everything, enjoy everything because sooner or later it'll be gone and you're moving on to your next chapter, you know, whatever that is in your life. And so that's, that's my, that's what I've learned most from this. And that's what I hope, other people learn from as well yeah definitely yeah man. now yeah that's one thing that people don't realize you know you're you're a freshman or a sophomore and you go oh, i got a bunch of times to figure it out and then it just comes comes to you quick and now yeah you said you're you're listening to those west side legends and now you, you know you're you're up there with them so um yeah that's i think that's really all i got for you man um I, um who you who, who you got in the world cup who's winning the world cup are you watching any of it oh uh, man yeah i am you know obviously uh u.s tied wales i mean that's unfortunate i'm hoping they get out of the group because obviously i want them to go as far as possible but mm-hmm. i'm a, i'm a big ronaldo fan so if okay. if portugal can get it done in his probably his last world cup i will be i'll be thrilled yeah. obviously i want the u.s to win or and then uh yeah, Port- I gotta go with Portugal, man. I-, I hope Ronaldo gets one and done his last one, last run. All right, so I guess, I guess that would answer the question of Messi or Ronaldo then for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. He he's he's different, man. Uh, what, what's your favorite Ronaldo moment? What kind of treading into soccer here a little bit? Probably, probably that hat trick against uh, Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just to come back from come back, come back. And I mean, they went down a big in the first leg and then come back down and come back and win that big in the second leg and move on to the, yeah, yeah. In the, no, the no. Champions League. I, I gotta, I mean, that's, that's gotta be my favorite moment of just uh, watching a, a winner do what he does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember what you're talking about now. Yeah. I would say mine is my favorite is when he jumped like 10 feet in the air for that header. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that one dude. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. All right, man. Well, yeah, now, nah, you know, we got most of it out. You know, hopefully the next couple of days, you know, Thanksgiving break, you got you can relax a little bit, get some sleep in you, get some good food in you. Any any big yeah. plans for the holidays? No, just really enjoy the kind of enjoy the moment with my family. I haven't I haven't I mean, I've obviously seen my parents, but I haven't seen some of the other side of my family since uh since the state game. So I mean I'm just Ready to sit down, have a wonderful meal with them. So yeah, that'll be that'll be a great experience. Yeah, nice man. Well, yeah, you know, show off show off the medal a little bit, right? Yeah. Right, let's see it real quick. <laughs> yes, sir. Gold medal, man. Two two golds, bro. That's that's special, man. So, uh, yeah, that's that's all I got, man. I appreciate your time. Appreciate you coming on here doing this. Um, you know, congratulations to yourself, to the West Side uh team coaches community all that you, know, you guys you guys went out there did the thing man you guys took it home so yeah that's 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 amazing 
Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And thank you for having me on, Oscar. Yeah, definitely. No problem. You know, good luck to you and, and you know, your recruitment as well. And then uh, soccer season. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to catch some soccer games. So I might, you might see me in the stands for a couple of those. <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, I'll be watching. Sounds good, man. Take it easy. Your time is up. Where there's fire, you see the smoke, yeah. I know liars, I seen them fall, yeah. I'm so tired from all these souls, it's done been a good year. My tires don't leave the road, yeah.